My name is John Giancinelli from Hastings Hotline Tools. I'd like to cover a little bit today on the hot stick care and maintenance. This serves a couple different reasons. The first, it makes the sticks last longer and work better. Number two, satisfies some OSHA regulations. The first of which is before use each day, you're supposed to look them over, visually inspect, and wipe them down. Number two, is every two years OSHA requires you to take that stick out of service for maintenance, care, and testing. As I mentioned earlier, one of the rules from OSHA is before you use the stick at the beginning of the day, you need to look it over, inspect it, and wipe it down. Hastings has got a couple different products for that reason. This is a silicone treated wiping cloth. Now if the stick's not real dirty, if there's some dust on it, while you're visually inspecting the stick, wipe it down with a cloth. It leaves a protective coating of silicone on there. If the stick's a little bit more dirty, we have the hot stick wipes. This contains more cleaner, but it still leaves a silicone protection over the surface of the stick. Another OSHA requirement is these hot sticks need to be taken out of service once every two years for a wet test. Now Hastings has got a hot stick tester. It does both the wet and the dry tests. The wet test is 75,000 volts per foot and obviously you spray water on the stick and then put the tester on it. The dry test is required by OSHA for the factories that make the sticks. Now this is 100,000 volts per foot, and Hastings tests every stick that leaves a factory at 100,000 volts per foot. If it doesn't pass that test, it doesn't leave. Well, this is approved by OSHA for these tests, and it's also a good tool to see where you need to clean the stick. If it fails, it'll let you know where, and depending whether it's the wet or the dry test, it'll tell you whether it's on the surface or if you've got moisture issues on the inside. So for the cleaning the surface, we've got the cleaner. This is an all-purpose cleaner. It's environmentally friendly and it works real well on these scrubber pads. Now we sell the gray color. We pick the gray because it's non-metallic. It's also got the right coarseness to it. It'll get in, get the dirt, and the metallic or conductive particles out of the stick without hurting the surface. Now once you have cleaned these hot sticks thoroughly with this pad, it has scoured all of the old silicone and all the wax off of there, you've got to put the wax on it. This is our boom and bucket wax for hot sticks. This is a hard wax, so when you apply this, wipe it right off. One coat works good, two coats works better. Thoroughly cover the stick in all the areas and then wipe it down thoroughly. It only takes a couple minutes to do a whole stick and it'll show up. The difference will show on the hot stick tester. Now for cleaning the inside. On the telepoles, there's a series of different hollow tubes. I mentioned earlier you can use the tester to go over this stick and the dry test will give you an idea what's going on on the inside. If it fails the dry test, take the stick apart and clean the inside. We do have a cleaner for that. This kit involves different rods of different lengths, and then there's different brush sizes to match the different sizes of tubes. So with this brush, our hot stick wipes work very well with this. The wipe goes through the end, covers the bristles, and then that can be used to swab out the inside of the hot stick and it leaves a silicone coating in there. I've got a few different sticks out here. I would like to demonstrate how you can use the hot stick tester in addition to our cleaning products to make sure that these will pass a hot stick test how to use it to figure out how it's going to pass and then we'll go from there. First of all, this first hot stick 
We just pulled this one out of the barn. I don't know what kind of condition it is. So we're going to use the hot stick tester on a dry test to see if it passes a dry. This is a good starting point. If it passes a dry test, I can make it pass a wet test. Okay, in this section down here, this will be our sample area. We passed the dry test. Now we can move on to the wet test, which is what OSHA requires. I'm going to spray good clean water on it. If you don't have distilled water, it's got to be at least bottled water quality. So I'm going to spray water on it. And what I'm looking for is for the water to beat up. I don't want it to flatten out and just drain off. Now that doesn't look very good. Let's put the tester on it. I put this on the wet test. I've zeroed my tester out. Let's see what we get. Okay, that's max the tester out. That has failed. We've got a bad spot on the end there. Okay, my next step is I'm going to get a scrubber pad and put some of the cleaner on it. Now we can clean this up. I'm also inspecting this. I'm looking for cracks. I'm looking for possible holes in it where it's been dropped. Uh, anything that can cause tracking on the end of this stick. And I can tell by the logos on here this is very old. So we'll give it a good shot, a good clean up here. And these towels I'm using are, there's no dye in them, there's no oils, they're good and clean. Okay, I'll inspect that. I think I can get a little bit more dirt off of it. I'm going to put a little bit more cleaner on my scrubber pad and I'm going to clean it again. Now clean evenly across the fiberglass. You don't want to concentrate in one pinpointed area. You want to keep this evenly uh, rubbed across the surface of the stick. Okay, I believe that's cleaned up pretty good. I'm going to wipe off any dirt that might have still be left on there. And now that I've thoroughly cleaned this stick, I'm going to have to wax it. So I'll get the boom wax and hot stick wax on here. I'm going to apply a liberal coating in this area that I've cleaned. And you can probably see the difference here. It turns it a richer color of yellow and then wipe it right off with a good clean cloth. Now that's one coat. I'll spray it with my clean water again. Then immediately I can tell it's beating up. That's what I want to see. Now we'll put the wet tester on here again. Turn it on, make sure it's on wet test, zero it out. Okay, we've got a good stick. When cleaning and testing hot sticks with exterior rods, you're going to do the same basic steps. Here you can see we've got some scuffs and skid marks. We're going to go over this with the scrubber pad and the cleaner, just like on the last stick. We'll focus our attention on these dark areas. One thing we do not want to do is wax over a dirty area. So we've got to be real careful that we clean everything out of here before we wax it. Now we can go over the rod also. Make sure the rod is clean because we're going to test over the top of that. So all the way around, you can slide the scrubber pad in between 
Make sure all these areas underneath are clean. Okay, it's coming out fairly clean. This one was, was pretty dirty. Now make sure when you're cleaning, you're also inspecting. All these long marks on here, they are scuffs. And a scuff is going to have a light color to it. It's going to be lighter than the main tube. So make sure when you're done cleaning that there's no residues or any dirt left in these scuff marks. Okay, now we'll clean off with our clean cloth so we can inspect this better. Make sure all the dirt's out of these scuffs. Make sure the rod's in good shape. And our inspection is revealing we've got a clean area here. We're going to test this area right here. Now I'm going to wax this area. Go to the hot stick wax. Make sure to cover these scuff marks real well with wax. If you need to reload on it, go ahead. Get a little bit more on the surface of your cloth and make sure that you have covered these scuff marks very well with the wax. Get under the rod and then the complete diameter of the rod itself. Okay, now that we've applied it, we're going to wipe it right off. Another clean cloth here. Be thorough in cleaning all of the wax off of the surface underneath and the rod. Okay, it looks like we're ready to do our wet test. Spray our clean water on the surface. We've got some good beading on the rod, especially. Now we're going to put our tester on the wet test. We're zeroed out. Let's test right over that rod. Didn't even move the needle. Okay, we'll spin it around and get the back side. Make sure that's wet down there. I'll spray water on this side. Okay, that's how we would test and clean a hot stick with an exterior rod. When you're cleaning telepoles, uh, whether it's to make them slide back and forth easier or if it hasn't passed a hot stick test, there's a couple things to do. We're going to take care of the outside just like the other sticks. First of all, on our triangular telepoles, we can take these apart and clean them by section. That's going to be a lot simpler and it's going to be a lot easier. First of all, I'm going to take the tip section and clean it like the other sticks we did. I'm going to take the scrubber pad and cleaner and I'm going to go over the outside of this stick. Now, I'm being careful not to drag any of this aluminum back onto the fiberglass. And around the buttons, I'm not going to spend a lot of time there to get any dirty water down inside the buttonhole. I'm cleaning in between, making a thorough cleaning, and then I'm going to dry this right off of here. After an inspection, I can see it's good and clean, and I'm ready to wax this section. Now the next section down, I'd like to start out with cleaning the inside of it. I'm going to take the rod, the brush, and a wipe, and I'm going to clean the inside of this section. So we talked a little bit about this earlier. Around the loop and the end of the brush, 
I'm going to go ahead and feed this wipe through there and drape it over the bristles. This is going to give me, for those of you who clean shotgun and rifle barrels, this is very familiar. I'll drape this down across the bristles. Now I've got something to swab the section of this fiberglass out with. Now I've picked one that's a little bit tight in there. And I'm just going to swish this around, run it back and forth a couple times, and make sure I've got a thorough cleaning job inside there. Around the button. Now move the wipe towards the tip. Run that down the tube first. And that's going to get anything that's socked right down there in the bottom. Do the same thing. Run it down in there, twist it around. And that's going to get anything all the way down here by the lock body. I can make a visual inspection down inside, and I can see that satisfies me. That's clean inside. Now I can clean the outside just like the last section with the scrubber pad and cleaner. Being careful not to get too much junk down in through the buttonhole or around the button. But I am going to clean it up and inspect each section. Wipe all the excess and dirty water off of there. And I can see that that gets quite dirty, the scrubber pad does. What I want to do is rinse that pad out every now and then with clean water. I do not want to use one bucket of cleaner to clean several sections with the same scrubber pad. That way I'm just rubbing dirty water back onto the same section. So I see a couple spots here that need a little more attention. I'll go ahead and clean those off and then wipe them down. And this section will be ready to wax. I did the inside section first because those wipes leave a little bit of moisture in there. It takes a minute or two for that to dry out. So while I'm cleaning and waxing the outside, the inside can be drying out. I'm going to go ahead and wax these two sections that we just cleaned. When I wax these sections, I'm going to wax in between the buttonhole and the button first. Making sure I'm thorough. What I don't want to do is gum up a lot of wax on the inside of the hole and on the inside of the button. I'll make a pass over it, but it's not caking on there. I'll take my clean cloth and wipe that down now. I can see it's shining up and it's a lot slicker to the touch. Now the tip section. Tip section, same thing. I'm not dragging the aluminum back down onto the fiberglass. I'm getting this metal section first. And careful not to gum up wax in the buttonhole. I'll wipe this down and again I can see it shining up nice and it's a lot slicker to the touch. This makes these HV sticks or the triangular sticks run a lot easier back and forth. Another item that I'm going to apply on the surface of the, sti the stick is our dry Teflon spray. Like I said it's a dry Teflon, it's non-conductive and it's non-flammable. I'm going to shake this and I apply it to both surfaces. I want to get it on the outside of the stick here and I'm going to run it back and forth on the inside of the next section. So this way I'm going to get some on the outside of this one and on the inside of this one. So I run that back and forth a couple times. Spray a little bit more on there. A 
this does not take place of the cleaner of the wax. What this does is it lubes the sections. It will not attract dust or moisture, but it does make the surface slicker so it runs back and forth easier on these HV telepoles. That's how I'm going to take care of my HV sticks. The round sticks, they don't have as much friction on the inside. You don't have to use the spray on there, but it will help for that last six or eight inches uh, where you're locking in the button. But the care and maintenance of all the extendable sticks is a similar fashion. Clean the outside, clean the inside, wax them, and then test. To summarize what we've been over earlier today, care and maintenance takes care of a couple major areas. First of all, it takes care of your hot stick, make sure it works the way it's supposed to and makes it last longer. And you're also abiding by OSHA regulations. The first of which is the one where you've got to look over, visually inspect, and wipe down a stick before use. And then the other rule that says that every two years you've got to take that stick out of service for inspection and testing the wet test. Now when you do the care and maintenance on your sticks, make sure that you only use approved products, which is cleaner, wax, and the scrubber pads. There's a lot of items out there that will leave contaminants on the sticks and will cause them to fail a hot stick test. So make sure the bottom line is you take care of the stick, it's going to take care of you.